going to follow up now on the first video that I put together that talked about expected value. As you remember from our first video, we talked about expected value could be calculated using the simplified formula of expected value equals probability of success times the gain minus the cost. We also talked about this simple example I've got posted up here on the board behind my head where we had no concern about probability of failure. Our confidence of success was 100%. That was where I cost $9 and you get $10. But as we mentioned in the last video, things are a little bit different when we have uncertainty associated with the numbers. So I want to show you the potential impact of uncertainty might have in this situation. Previously, we calculated the expected value of this transaction was $1. Clearly, it's a go-ahead project. We want to go ahead and pursue that and uh, make a dollar every time we uh, participate in a transaction like that. But if there's uncertainty, there's a little bit more to learn. And ultimately, the whole purpose of doing these calculations is to make better decisions, to help us assist us in making better decisions. That's what decision analysis is all about. Assist us in identifying those things that weren't obvious so that we can make better decisions. So, following up then on the uncertainty, suppose it wasn't just a dollar for dollar transaction. I wasn't going to give you $10 in exchange for your $9. Suppose it was a transaction, say, uh, I'll give you uh, euros uh, for my krona. Now, I travel to Norway once in a while, and I've got a whole stack of krona here. And suppose there's someone else has a whole stack of euros. The whole point of this transaction is, I think that the euros are worth about 10 bucks. I think the krona are worth about 9 bucks. So if I make the transaction, I should have a net gain in dollars of about a dollar. But I'm not really sure. So let's take a look, take a look at the uncertainty. Here I posted uh, the possible uncertainty associated with the gain. Now, euros are a little bit more volatile than krona. So I'm going to say that the... Uh, Euros are worth probably ten dollars, but could be eight or twelve. Equally likely to be eight, ten, or twelve dollars. The krona that I'm going to give you are probably worth nine, but they could be eight, nine, or ten dollars. I'm not exactly sure. I'm not exactly sure what the transaction value at the moment is for krona. So the cost is going to be either eight, nine, or ten. The value is going to be eight, ten, or twelve. So obviously, if they both were at 8, then the expected value was 0. But if it's 10 and 8, the expected value was 2. And if it's 12 and 8, the expected value is 4. Sorry about that reflection in the middle there. But uh, put this over just a tad so you can see the 4. Now we can do the same thing for $9 and same thing for 10. We end up with this little 9 box pattern. And the answers come out when we calculate all the expected values for each of those boxes. At 0, 2, 4, minus 1, 1, 3, minus 2, 0, and plus 2. Because these are uniform distributions, equally likely to be any one of those three numbers, is symmetry, and so our expected value falls right in the middle of the nine box pattern. But if you look at it, notice there are four transactions here the 0, the minus 1, the minus 2, and the 0, for which we don't make any money at all, break even or lose money. And there are five transactions now for which we'll make some kind of a profit associated with the transaction. So what's happened is the uncertainty has changed my confidence of success, which is that this is a profitable transaction now, from 100% down to 56%. Why? Because only five out of nine of my discrete scenarios here are actually profitable for me. Four of them are break even or lose money. So what's happened? With the addition of uncertainty, we have additional concerns now that our project may not be quite as attractive as we thought it was. It's pretty much and equally likely as not that this transaction is going to be profitable. Because of the volatility or uncertainty associated with the gain and the volatility or uncertainty associated with the cost. So 
bottom line, it's just as important to be able to do the calculation correctly as to get the values appropriate and document the uncertainty associated with those values. Not all values have this perfectly symmetric uncertainty either. And so we have to worry about dramatically different outliers. It could have been 8, 10, or 15, which would have been a dramatically different situation than 8, 10, or 12. Now, if you remember, we also did a transaction where we talked about the chance of success being only 25%. And there, our cost was much lower at $2. Our gain was still $10, and the expected value was $0.50. Cents. So we can make the same nine box pattern again now for the nine scenarios associated with our costs. We still have eight, 10, or 12 associated with the uh, gain, but maybe the cost might vary from $1.52 to $2.50. So we once again calculate nine different expected values, and they range anywhere from minus 0 0.5 to plus 1.5. But if we look at these scenarios now, we have a minus, a zero, and a zero associated with three scenarios. And the rest of the scenarios are 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 1, 1, and 1.5. So now my chance of success, which was 25%, now has dropped to a commercial chance of success, or the chance of actually making some kind of a profit associated with this and these projects of only 17%. Now, 17% is a lot riskier than 25%. We have a much less likely that we're going to generate a profitable scenario associated with it. This is probably a more informative number than this one. So once again, it's important to not only document the probabilities and the gains and the cost, but document the uncertainty associated with the probabilities, gains, and cost. Now, all of this can be done in Excel. Now, here's just an example of an Excel spreadsheet that I put together. I've highlighted some of the plots with a marker. Here we have a continuous plot, and there's my zero profit line. You can see on this uh, probability over here, one-third of the scenarios are either zero or negative. Two-thirds of them are profitable. That shows up a little better in the histogram over here, where one-third of them are zero or negative. Two-thirds of them are profitable. So we can diagram this data to try to communicate the information that we're trying to portray with regard to the real risks associated with this project. So in summary, not only do we have to worry about counting the numbers correct associated with our expected values or mean values associated with our chance, our costs, and our gain, we have to document the uncertainty around those numbers appropriately as well. Because not only can the probability of success impact our chance of making a commercial viable outcome, but the uncertainty can also cause us to have successful outcomes that ultimately don't make money. And so we ended up here with one third of my successful outcomes that really didn't generate any value for me. In summary, when you do expected value, you not only have to use the numbers right, you have to get the numbers right. There's two major aspects then to decision analysis. Getting the numbers correct, including the uncertainty around the numbers, and using the numbers correctly, which has to do with the calculations and the portrayal and communication of the results. We're going to go on in a moment here now to talk about what happens if I don't know anything about the number. All I know is it's probably greater than or probably less than some specific value, and that will be our next video.